I was so surprised to see that recycle shops in Japan have recently become very popular. In the big cities or out in the rural areas, you can almost always find a recycle shop. In fact, the concept of recycle shops is still quite new, so there is no word in Japanese which means the same thing as thrifting in English, which is a verb that means to visit recycle shops or even garage sales. In today's video, I will talk about why the recycle shop in Japan may be for you when you come to visit Japan or if you are already living in Japan. Also, I will explain the concept of sodai gomi, which in English is translated as bulk pickup and the relationship to the recycle shop phenomenon. And lastly, I will show you a very interesting recycle shop close to where I live and can be found by the landmark of a giant triceratops dinosaur and is both a recycle shop and discount shop together. A lot to cover today, so let's get started. Hi, I'm Mike Matsuno, the man in Japan. I'm originally from Hawaii and have been living in Japan for over 25 years. On this channel, I talk about everyday life and living in Japan. If you like the content, please hit that like button and subscribe. The popularity of recycle shops is really unbelievable for me because when I first came to Japan over 35 years ago, the idea of the average Japanese person buying something secondhand or at a recycle shop was almost unheard of. At that time, Japan was the second largest economy in the world. They had proven to the world that Japan was an economic miracle and powerhouse. Disposable income was abundant for many and most Japanese were in the mindset that you only buy new things that are of high quality in a reputable store like a department store in which usually were very quite expensive. Buy anything secondhand or used was considered to be for lower class or poor people. Back then, people had money and throughout the bubble economy, people consumed and Japanese households would continue to upgrade and replace their electronic appliances, their furniture, their cars, and even their homes. In addition, as I talked about in my video on Japanese bats and the size of the home, Japanese homes are quite small and lack storage space. So if they bought something new that took up large area, they would have to throw something out. It was not possible to just move it out into the extra bedroom or in the garage like in the United States or other countries with much larger homes. It was and still is difficult to be a hoarder in Japan. There's no extra space. In past videos, you've seen part of my mansion, a 3LDK condo apartment here in Japan. I personally live here alone and the two rooms have become what I call the avalanche room, just for storing things for the time being. But still, it's not such a big apartment and upstairs above my apartment, a typical middle class family with five members live in the same size apartment and space that I have for one. So unless you are very rich or live way out in the country in a traditional country home, Japanese usually live in quite small apartments, condos, and homes. When Japanese buy or replace anything in their home, Due to the lack of space, they have to get rid of the old item they're replacing. So there's a city-run service called Sodai Gomi, which means large item pickup or bulk pickup. Up until about 10 or 15 years ago, Sodai Gomi used to be free and picked up once a month. The city or ward would come by and pick up your old large items and they would be crushed in the back of the garbage truck and thrown out. Sodai Gomi items were not recycled. However, in the evening before the Sodai Gomi pickup the night before, much of the furniture and bulk items were already put out for the next morning on the curve. Many people, especially university students and foreigners, including myself, would always go out and take a look at what was being thrown out and if we found something Thing we liked, we would take it home. It was free. My present apartment has several furniture items that I picked up at Sodai Gomi sites in the dark of the night 15 years ago. The furniture that I picked up was older and a bit worn, but after wiping them down and cleaning them up, they work fine. And usually Japanese take really good care of their belongings, so many of the items thrown out at Sodai Gomi sites were still in quite good condition. The sad part was that when the city award came to pick up the Sodai Gomi, all the Sodai Gomi items would usually be crushed and disposed of. So it really was and still is very motai nai, which means such a waste. These days, the city will charge for Sodai Gomi pickups. The cost will depend on the size of the item. Just last week, I took out a green sofa, which cost 1,200 yen for the pickup. I also put out two old electric heaters, which were 400 yen each. So a total of 2,000 yen or $20 for the three items. Consequently, the other big change due to the popularity in recycle shops is people can now sell their own furniture and household items to recycle shops if they are still in good condition and if the recycle shop believes that people would purchase them. So if people can sell their couch or dining room set or dresser to the recycle shop, they win double. They may get a small sum for selling it to the recycle shop and they do not have to pay for the Sodai Gomi pickup fee. 
So today in Japan, there are many recycle shops. And when I say recycle shops, this includes secondhand shops, reuse shops, and thrift shops. Over the last 20 years, I think there has been a big shift in thinking for Japanese to use and reuse recycled things, sustainable use of things, buying cheaper things, and getting a good deal. There are various levels and kinds of recycle shops in Japan. And if you go onto YouTube, you can see many larger, professionally managed recycle shops in larger urban cities. These larger shops are run by larger companies and they have large and big space, more staff, are usually well organized and clean. They offer a large selection of things, but also they have higher prices. So if you need to find something specific, these larger stores, usually in urban areas, are the easiest way to find something that you want. Many of them carry expensive secondhand brand items locked up in glass cases, which a lot of visitors like to look at and buy. Outside of companies, many of the recycle shops are also run by couples or sole owners, like a mom and pop type of business. Usually the selection at these types of stores is much less and maybe not as well organized. However, you can usually still find some good deals if you know what you're looking for and what the actual price is. Many collectors of different things like to frequent recycle shops, so look for gems in the rough. You can always try and bargain and negotiate. I always did, especially if you are buying a lot of things and they're more expensive, you can bargain. If you are just visiting Japan and you are looking for possible gifts or just to see what Japan is all about, a recycle shop is a great microcosm and reflection of a culture and you can see what is important to them. You could Google words like recycle or chuko of that area you're planning to visit and look for a recycle shop in that area. Also, if you are a tourist, you may be looking for Japanese items, souvenirs like lacquerware, pottery, sake drinking sets, kokeshi dolls, artificial samurai swords, and helmets. Most recycle shops usually have a Japan section for these types of Japanese paraphernalia. I've bought at least three different antique samurai helmets for display, some beautiful framework and patchwork, antique scrolls, beautiful hand-painted fans. Stella has bought some cushions, zabutongs, hot water heater, the giant lucky business cat. If you are presently living or planning to move to Japan to live, you may recall in the first part of my video on cleaning in Japan, I talked about how apartments and mansions are completely unfurnished and so you may want to furnish your apartment with cheaper things from the recycle shops. In my case, in addition to the furniture that I picked up at the Sodai Gomi drop-off points in the dark of night 15 years ago, my apartment has several items that I got from the recycle shops. The refrigerator, the TV, the couch, the chairs, the toaster oven are all from different recycle shops. I don't want to give you the impression that I am poor and cheap, but most of my furniture and appliances here in Japan is either from the Sodai Gomi 15 years ago or from recycle shops. So you may want to consider the recycle shops when you first move to Japan and just start up because unless you move into a furnished apartment, which is usually still quite rare, you will need to make an initial investment of basic appliances like a toaster oven, rice cooker, pots and pans, cooking stove, washing machine, and in many places, an air conditioning heater. So a recycle shop may be able to help you start out with lesser costs. Now, depending on the recycle shop, some may give you a one to three month guarantee or warranty on some appliances if something goes wrong after purchasing it. Other shops are you purchase at your own risk. But usually in Japan, people and businesses are quite honorable and they're not out to cheat or con customers. But be sure to ask the shop people about if they have any warranty or what the return policy is. About 10 years ago, we found a unique recycle shop called Takara Soko, a warehouse of treasures. A few years ago, Stella and I were teaching at Osaka Gakuin University. She was the former director of the international chat lounge called iChat. Stella created a very successful and active major English communication program that became the center of the campus with an array of English international activities and events. They had an iChat rock band, a dance group. They had huge activities every month. And since the university could not give iChat a large budget for props and events, we started looking at recycle shops to see if we could find the necessary equipment and props for less cost. Almost every week we were in Kyotonabe, we would visit recycle shops in this area. There were five main shops we would visit. Takara Soko was our favorite. The reason was that over 10 years ago, we met the manager of this store, Shibana-san, who's an extremely kind person who speaks some English and is very honest and honorable. And when we bought things for the iChat lounge, we bought things in bulk, like 30 used stuffed animals, or a car full of Christmas lights and decorations, or musical instruments and equipment like drums, speakers, keyboards, mixers, etc. 
And since we bought in bulk and usually higher ticket items, we were always able to negotiate with Shibano san for a good price. It was a win win. We got a lot for our money, and he was able to move large items out of his store. Just last week, I wanted to get rid of four dining room chairs, a black seating chair, and lots of random things I'd found when I was doing my deep cleaning. I also wanted to get a new sofa because the old one was broken and no longer comfortable. So I picked out a sofa here, and Shibano Sung and his staff person personally delivered the sofa and carried it up to my apartment and then took the chairs and things that I wanted to sell or give to them. And we calculated the sell and the buy, and I paid him the difference. The perfect win win situation. And that was just done last week. They did not charge me for delivery or labor. Imagine a recycle shop that delivers and picks up for free. But just a quick note, Takara no Soko does deliver and pick up on Wednesdays, but you have to be in within a certain distance from the store. And you have to have enough items that you bought or will sell or both that would make their trip worthwhile. One thing I forgot to mention is that Takara Soko, the warehouse of treasures, is actually two parts. The first part is they buy recycled goods and then they sell it in their store. The second part is they are purchased from wholesalers who either maybe they couldn't sell it or they wanted to get rid of their inventory or they went up out of business. So Takara Soko purchases these wholesale items and they, they discount it and sell it to you in the store. So half the store are recycled goods and half are new discounted items. It could be like light foods, products, snacks, Japanese snacks, it could be t-shirts. You name it, I think they have it. That's also a very interesting combination. Recycled goods, but also discounted wholesale items. I was just looking at some of the seasonal things that for summer that companies didn't sell. It's still good until next year, summer, maybe end of this year. So something that costs, it says at least 3,700 yen, about $37, is selling only for 630 yen like six dollars you name it they have it it's actually quite overwhelming that they have so many things going on in that store you know whether it's the recycled goods or the new goods or the snacks or the wholesale goods that they're trying to move really quickly unbelievable so after going to otakara shoko i decided everybody was buying those gift seasonal items so i decided that i had to at least try and see what it was I didn't really know what, what, what it was. I did see the little, you know, clear package, but... So all in all, a great haul today. This was only 200 yen. Now, these jellies are really expensive. For those of you who don't know Japanese jelly, they're different from um, like American. We say jelly, that's what we put on toast with butter and jelly, peanut butter and jelly. These are different. These are like desserts. They're kind of like, um, I wouldn't say a pudding, but they're more, they're, they're much uh, thicker. They're usually fruit flavored. You put these in the refrigerator and when it's really hot, you eat them and they're very refreshing. But anyway, these are jellies and Japanese eat them in the summer. So this is $2, this is a great deal. And the expiration date was February 1st, 2022. So really a good deal. But the taker price was 37.80. So 630, so about six times less, 83% off. That's unbelievable. And expiration date is January 1st, 2022. So that's still, what, this is September, October, November, December. Three more months. That's unbelievable that they're selling it so cheaply, so early. But a lot has to do with Japanese are very strict about, you know, seasons and what they eat, when they eat. And so there are like these rules, like for me, it's kind of hard to really understand because of um you know in japan like october 1st japanese uh salary men are supposed to start wearing long sleeve versus short sleeve even if it's hot you know so the temperature and the climate and the weather doesn't matter it's the date october 1st everybody start wearing long sleeve shirts or even like when serving iced coffee although now it's more common to serve iced coffee all year round before like october 1st was the cutoff when i first came to japan what 35 years ago Reiko, iced coffee in Kansai Ben or Osaka Ben, if you if you order Reiko iced coffee after October 1st, the waitress would go, eh? Moju Gatsu. Like, eh? Like, what are you talking about? It's already October 1st. Even if it was really hot outside, it wouldn't matter. So, again, Japanese, very, very strict about what they wear, what they eat, and the seasons. 
but I'm sure they sell quite quickly. I saw a lot of ladies, older ladies there going like, sugoi, 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 which means like amazing or unbelievable. So they were really impressive. Those older ladies, obachangs were impressed and that's why I bought these. I thought, wow, if the obachangs are impressed then man, that must be a really good deal. Both of these, very happy. Uh, thank you, Otakara, Soko, and Shimano-san. So thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please hit that like button and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video. Arigato!